there's not an empty seat in the house right now. Let's get it popping. Play United, play aggressive. Bring the fight to them. Touchdown, Kentucky! Down he goes. Let's go! Levis keeps it himself. Touchdown, Kentucky! Oh. It's about that G on your helmet. It's you or me! Hand it off to Cook. Touchdown down the middle. Touchdown, Georgia. Uh-oh, watch out. Absolute domination by the Bulldogs. Touchdown, Zeus! Dial up the deep ball. McCarkey is gone. Touchdown, Georgia. Good day to be a dog. So it's time for the 75th edition of the Dogs and the Cats. The Home Depot SEC on CBS brings us to Vince Dooley Field, Sanford Stadium in Athens, Georgia, and a matchup of two unbeatens. The 11th ranked Wildcats of Kentucky. And now, after Alabama was beaten a week ago, it's the top ranked Bulldogs of Georgia. As you take a look at the standings in the SEC, in the East, Georgia and Kentucky both unbeaten. Florida's game is not over yet with LSU. And we welcome you to Athens, everybody. Brad Nessler with my partner Gary Danielson, Jamie Erdahl down on the field. And what's already been kind of a crazy season, partner, this is the first time in the SEC since they went to divisional play East and West. The two 6 and O's have played each other. Here they are. They both have something to prove, though, don't they? <laughs> they do. Let's, let's kind of start with Kentucky. I mean, you're right, 6 and O. I think they have to prove, and everybody's asking the question, can they move up a weight class? And today's an upper weight class yes. for them with Georgia. And Georgia, we all know, they've got a championship defense, but the question is, uh, quarterback right. again, do they have enough? And we'll talk about that in a second, but that defense, 5.5 points a game. They're number one in virtual every statistical category, so even if you don't pay attention to SEC football, you know Georgia has a great defense. But as Gary talked about, it's a quarterback situation that everybody in this state talks about day in and day out, and we'll take you back to a little flashback of Stetson Bennett and how things were going about this time last year. Stetson Bennett, former walk-on. Now he's a starter. Bennett's in trouble. Throws on the run. Bennett's intercepted. That one's on the quarterback. He throws it behind. Bad throw. Georgia will go with a new quarterback. Kirby has been great with Stetson. Through the mistakes, he's been positive with them. He's his quarterback, but, you know, we've all gone through these games. You make some mistakes, somebody else is going to get in the game. I think he's going to get more opportunity to play. There's the prophetic comment ah. from my partner. I think he's going to get another chance. He has, and he's taking advantage of it. You know, I was thinking, as I was listening to it again, I was thinking, you know, what we love about college football is fans can overreact. Yep. But the coaches have to make decisions short term and then long term. And that's what that's why I respect this decision by Kirby. You know, he respected Stetson Bennett and he knew he may need him again. And there you go in 2021, an injury and Stetson Bennett is the right guy now for this football team. And for Kentucky, Mark Stoops has done a marvelous job in his nine years in Lexington, and he's always built his team right. around the running game. And why not when you got two horses like they have in the backfield led by the number one rusher in the conference in Chris Rodriguez? Yes, this program was built on toughness running the ball, but they're a little different this year. It's 2021, and Kentucky has gone to the transfer portal, and they brought in Will Levis, a quarterback that can run but don't sleep on his throwing ability and they've got a big play wide receiver in Wondell Robinson a little different look for this Kentucky football team for more on Kentucky we head down to the field and Jamie Erdahl Jamie it was this time last year Brad that Mark Stoops knew they needed a change offensively he thought that if he found the right system he'd find the right coach well the LA Rams caught Stoops' eye offensively and that led him to Liam Cohen Stoops didn't know Cohen. He cold called the assistant passing game coach for the Rams, asked him if he'd be interested. It feels like an unlikely pair. Stoops from Youngstown, Ohio, Cohen from Rhode Island, but it's a match made in heaven, and this offense for Kentucky is coming right now. I was wondering if he asked about Stafford first, and then he... <laughs> <laughs> well, there. <laughs> Six and oh for the first time since Bear Bryant was coaching. It is the 75th edition. Georgia has won 11 straight. First ever matchup of 6-0 SEC East teams since they went to divisional play in 92. It's beautiful. Clear skies, 
73 degrees in Athens. A little bit of a breeze. Georgia won the toss and deferred. 93,000 plus. It's the hottest ticket anywhere in the conference today, if and, not the country. And who would have thought exactly. in, in the year that this would be such a huge game? Jay Camarda has it teed up to kick away. Zach Johnson's back deep. We're underway in Athens. Johnson will take it at the three. Got a big opening up the middle. Got across the 25 before Georgia closed the door on him, and Kentucky will go to work right there as we check our Papa John starting lineups. And it starts with a guy that Gary just talked about, Will Levis. Transferred from Penn State, played there, but mostly as the runner of the quarterback situation. And now he's been able to show off his arm and his legs. Last week, five touchdowns against LSU in their 42-21 win. Chris Rodriguez, the conference top rusher behind Levis on the first snap for the Wildcats from the 26-yard line. Kirby Smart tells the crowd to get here early and be loud, and they are on the first snap. Rodriguez, straight up the middle. Nice game, picked up about four. Here's some of the other offensive players that you're going to see today. They like to run behind Kennard, all conference right tackle. And you see the rest of the skill players. A lot of three tight end, two and three tight end situations, especially because they're down a receiver in Josh Ali. That means Isaiah Epps gets more reps. End around. And Dow Robinson got the corner. Going to be short of the first down by about a yard. Jackson ran him out of bounds on the far side. The Georgia defense has been so stingy. They've given up nine yards so far today, but they don't give up much. N'Kobe Dean's the undisputed leader at his linebacker position coming off a game where he had his first career interception last week against Auburn. Now it's a third and short. Newest points allowed through six games in a long, long time, and Levis is going to get the first down on the quarterback keeper. One of the things that Kentucky has already done to start this game, if you watch Georgia's tape, they do a lot of stunting with their line late. They shift late, they move late, and so far Kentucky has snapped the ball quickly, trying to catch this Georgia defense moving and not getting quite set. Juton McLean. The second running back split out to the top of the screen as a wideout. It's funny, it looks like five wideouts, but there's actually two tight ends in the game. Right. So, empty backfield for Levis. On first down from the 37. Fires it quick, complete. Robinson again, and Robinson's got another first down. And he gets into Bulldog territory at the 49. This was pretty easy. Georgia way off Robinson. Plenty of cushion before the snap. Ball was going there the whole way. And targets, that's the key. That's what Cohen, offensive coordinator Liam Cohen has brought. The NFL concept, concept of finding your playmakers and targeting them with the ball. That opening drive has moved the Wildcats to the Bulldog 49 where it's first down, and that's McLean, who I just talked about on a previous snap. Maybe got a yard. They're going to blow the whistles before he comes out the backside. Jordan Davis had him stood up. And just, Jordan Davis. Yeah, just remember, when you run the ball inside, you've got this big guy in there. Maybe as good a got player at his position there's anybody else in any other position in college football this year. He is mammoth and he is quick. Yeah, he's like a dancing bear out there. Three receivers to Levis right. They'll keep it on the ground to Rodriguez who broke off the right side. Good game. Flag down as he gets down to the 41 yard line. James Carter is our referee. 
illegal formation against the offense. More than four players in the back here. Five-yard penalty. Replay second down. That's really the first mistake in the opening three minutes for Kentucky. You can see it five men in the backfield there very simply somebody was not up at the line of scrimmage here one two three four five guys in the backfield so that backs it up into kentucky territory 47. first time they've had long yardage second and 14. bunch group of receivers and now they motion Whoa. over to the other side, and this is going to be Jalen Carter, and he's like a mini Jordan Davis, if you will. <laughs> Are you allowed to put that together with I don't know. 320 pounds? <laughs> but as you can see, he squeezes inside, and really, he and Devontae Wyatt, number 95, both of them, Olayed and got in the backfield and no chance, nowhere to go on that play. And this is where this defense wants to get you and has for the first month and a half of the season. Third down and long. Just a three-man rush, swing pass out, barely caught and down goes the running back. Quay Walker made the tackle. So here's the problem for Kentucky. One mistake, they get behind the chains, and against this elite defense, it's very difficult. That illegal formation really cost them on this drive. That's Kiaris Jackson waiting on the punt of Colin Goodfellow. Jackson backpedals, takes it at the 15, gets buried right there. A nice job on the coverage by Zach Johnson. That was a pretty, pretty dangerous play by Jackson that time, not taking a fair catch. And you could see the coaches came right out to him. Is we have a block on, we got no blocking. You got a fair catch that. Just five minutes into the game here in Athens. Papa John's starting lineups. Stetson Bennett, the fourth, comes out as the starter. Seven and two as a starter in his career. Of course, this year perfect. And the rest of the offense that joins him. And there's a guy that people get a little tired of tackling in the second half, Zamir White. Along with James Cook, Kendall Milton, the backfield. The receivers are young, but they're getting more and more experience. There's JT Daniels, who would have been the starting quarterback or was for the first three games of the season before the injury. And that's number 13 show. And on Thursday, we were out there. He was lightly throwing. Yep. They start from the 15. White hit in the backfield. Nice job by the Kentucky defense led by Yusef Corker. And a loss on the play. Well, I can tell you, when you have safeties making tackle like that, he's in the box, not accounted for, hits it, makes the tackle. That is an aggressive defense. Eight in the box to start the game you know, for Kentucky. We talk so much about Georgia's defense. Kentucky's defense is number two in the conference. So there are no slouches out there in the white with the chrome helmets. Bennett to throw on a rollout, completes it. And that's big Darnell Washington and a hurdle and a first down all the way out near the 35. The big O, they call him, not because of his name, but because of his jersey. Well, when you're that big, and remember, already Todd Munkin has seen that Kentucky's aggressive to stop the run. You don't even have to do a high hurdle here. He just sits a low hurdle. It's <laughs> a light jump for that guy. Devontae Robinson, you got to go higher than that. He's 6'7", and he got it out to the 33-yard line. First down. Amir White, left side, might have got the face mask in there. I did not see a flag, but somebody had a piece of his cage there. Picked up about four. Here's a Kentucky defense. Josh Paschal, a three-time captain. It's never happened before in Kentucky football. And he is a difference maker off the edge. And there's where I thought they were yeah, going to face mask. You're right. Good call. 
it should have been called. Second down and six, empty backfield for Stetson Bennett. Over the middle and in and out of the hands of his intended receiver, Bowers, the freshman tight end. Well, that's the second big play. I think that was Corker it was. number 29 that came over the top of that aggressively, figuring it's going to be a short pass, and he was right there. Beautiful defensive play. But again, if you're Todd Munkin, you're saying, well, this Kentucky team is really aggressive. How soon do we go? Double move and gone on. James Cook joins the Georgia backfield on a third down. Georgia 49% on their third down conversions. Here they come. Bennett. They pick it up, and he has plenty of time to throw, but he threw behind his intended receiver, incomplete intended for A.D. Mitchell, and Georgia will have to punt. Look at this protection by this Georgia offensive line. They just make a pile in front of Stetson Bennett on this play. Here they come. Boom. Nothing. <laughs> Nobody. Poor throw by Stetson Bennett, about five yards inside the field. That was his first poor throw of the game. Yep. You expect your quarterback to make that throw. Wondell Robinson back waiting on Jake Camarda's punt. Ooh. Camarda got all of this one. Fair catch. That landed at the one though and it made it to the end zone. If that had taken a backward spin it would have been perfect. And good, he knows that. Good decision by Wondell Robinson there. Not too aggressive. Understood where he was getting it to the 20. No score. 8-12 remaining first quarter. We'll be right back. Sports news, expert picks, and the biggest highlights on CBS Sports HQ, the free 24-7 sports news network. Download the CBS Sports app to watch today. You can catch Gary joining the HQ team after our game here in Athens today. We but scoreless. I love. I actually do like doing it because it makes you kind of think of the game all the way through. Let's go back to the throw to see if Bennett was a little bit off balance. This is the receiver where he's going with the football. And let's see if he doesn't open up his left side enough. This ball should have gone all the way to the sideline. Never really opened up that left side to be able to trigger it out wide enough. Yeah, Mitchell had a half step over there if he could yep. have led him to the sideline better. Instead, it's back to Kentucky offensively. And Will Levis from the 20. Robinson goes behind him. He throws it out to him. That ball is incomplete. Whistle blew. Wando Robinson at Nebraska played a little bit of running back and wide receiver. He has not lined up in the backfield this year yet, but we are wondering going into this game whether where they would place him to try to get the ball to give Georgia some different looks. He tried there and it was incomplete. He got 51 passes for Nebraska a year ago. Second down at 10. Rodriguez. Straight up the middle. Tough run, but only got about three before three Georgia Bulldogs stand him up. Now the faces are new in some very important spots for Kentucky offensively. And there's three of them, including the offensive coordinator that Jamie talked about in the open. Levis came from Penn State. Wandell from Nebraska. Wandell was a uh, commit to Kentucky. He is a Kentucky native, and the whole state was excited about him. And he said, kind of wavered back and forth. Right. Says, oh, I guess all the pressure, I'm just going to get away from home, go to Nebraska. Got there and then said, you know what? I think I want to be closer to home. And they're really happy that he came back home. Third down and seven. Blitz coming from Georgia. Levis throws ricocheted in the air, incomplete. Jackson made the hit from the safety spot back there. And everybody was trying to get to that loose well, ball. Jackson tripped over a body on the ground, or I think he would have had this tip ball for an interception. Slant pass coming in. Watch the ball go up. And then Jackson in the middle of the field, he's tracking it and trips <laughs> right, right over a play over the pile. And he gets upset because he I think he knows he would have had this. <laughs> He has been. I think the whistle blew before the play as well, to tell you the truth. I heard a whistle, but it is pretty loud in here. It's really loud. They called a timeout before the play clock expired, so we'll take a quick timeout so with him. Even if Jackson would have done it, he right. wouldn't have done it. 
Queen Latifah is back and unstoppable as the Equalizer. Don't miss a new episode of the Equalizer tomorrow on CBS. Brad Nessler, Gary Danielson, Jamie Erdahl, our CBS crew in Athens, full house. To watch two undefeated, number 11 and number one. No score here at the midway point. Levis going to flare it out. Out of the backfield, and Georgia's not going to allow the first down as Rodriguez has swarmed under. That was actually really good zone defense by Georgia that time. For the first time on third down, Kentucky tried to kind of give the look of a quick pass, and Levis was going to try to go deep down the middle, but he had nothing. A little bit of holding right there, but they got away with it by the Georgia defense. And uh, as all the coaches have been telling us, Ness, in college ball, they can get your hands on you. Hey, yeah, they, they grab you a little bit. Yep. Behind Goodfellow, set to punt. Kiaris Jackson waits on the other end. This is a line drive. And Jackson fumbled this one and has to cover it. So he didn't fair catch the first one. Had a clear shot at this one with maybe some room to run, but then didn't handle it well. And, and even though he may not be 100%, Georgia and Kirby trust him 100% yep. fielding those punts. He did it all last year as well. Kickoff returns too, but a little shaky start here in the first quarter for Kiaris. He's still shaking his head. So Georgia back to work on offense. The 28-yard line. Kendall Milton and James Cook in the backfield with Stetson Bennett. That's Cook now in motion. Milton on the inside run got back to the line of scrimmage and that's about it. DeAndre Square squared him off right there. One of the captains of the defense. Coming off a really good game against LSU last week. Square had eight tackles, a sack, a forced fumble, and a tackle for no gain on that one. Yeah, that's a good do in there. A duo in there with Square and Jones, the transfer from Ole Miss, ja Ole Miss, Jacquez Jones. Those two guys are very active. Second and ten. Bennett will roll to throw and does and completes it out to the 40-yard line, and that's A.D. Mitchell. First down. Yeah, I think this is a good call by Todd Munkin, the offensive coordinator. He's got to get Stetson Bennett comfortable again, gets him outside of the pocket. He is really nimble. He's been able to gain yards, obviously running, but that time he had an easy throw to the outside. Georgia goes with some tempo here. That one sailed on uh, Bennett incomplete. Todd Munkin right there in front of you, offensive coordinator in his second year as a coordinator here in Athens. <laughs> and the head coach, little reaction on the sideline. He's been known to do that. Second down and 10. Bowers, a tight end, is split as a wide receiver down to the bottom of your screen. They'll keep it on the ground. A quick little hesitation and then burst through for five. It's still going to be third down and five. Well, let's remember here about this Kentucky defense. Their top two nose tackles, McCall and Oxendine, are both out of the game. Oxendine, talking to the Kentucky coaches, had his best game a year ago. They're going to rotate youth at that nose tackle. Will not be surprised if Georgia does not go right at the middle of that Kentucky defense. Justin Rogers, number 52, that we just showed you, is a freshman. He's a good one and one of those four or five star type guys, but uh, the people he's replacing, as Gary said, were really stout on the inside. And George is going to take a timeout here with just over five to go in a scoreless first quarter in Athens. Boilers with a quick lead. Let's go back that last Yeah, play. Mark Stoops a little upset because he felt that Georgia had 12 men in formation and couldn't call timeout. It's like having a huddle with 12. They had 12 in formation. Should have got five yards called on. They need five yards on third down. Bennett got leveled as he threw an incomplete. Good pressure that time. Yeah, this was a timing pass, a quick slant. Once the throw didn't go right away, 
he saw that he was in trouble and just had to throw the ball away. Had big right coming right at him. Jordan Wright, the guy that hit him as he let go of the ball. It's going to bring Jake Camarda out to punt again. The wind is pretty strong left to right here. Yep. Camarda's last punt went a little bit too far. Dangerous. This one yeah. doesn't go too far. It's dangerous for Kentucky. What a punt. It was an end over end, by the way. He's, I don't want to call it a pooch punt. What do you? But an downwind. Aussie. An, yep. Aussie. Aussie. Yeah, an Aussie. An Aussie one. <laughs> because downwind, he knew he had the wind. He went with an end over end, and it worked perfectly. Great my, execution. But my friend and former putter, Cam Nizelik, taught me it's an Aussie. And it did just the right thing and dropped down around the three yard line. So they spotted at the five, and that's where Kentucky goes back to work. Cavassier smoke the tailback right now, and he's standing in his own end zone. Robinson in motion. It's smoke. Got about two. Quay Walker met him first. You know what I noticed so far about Kentucky in this game? Arkansas came in and could not handle the crowd noise. Right. Kentucky seems perfectly comfortable with it. Here's a quick throw, wide out screen to Robinson. Broke through the two blockers. The flag flies in. He didn't get to the first down marker, but he did burst through there. And let's see what the penalty's about. Yeah, I, usually that's holding on one of those receivers out there. Might be a tight end lined up wide. Holding. Offense. Number 84. The penalty is half the distance to the goal. Replay second down. Isaiah Cummings, yeah, a I, guilty party. Isaiah Cummings, uh, a wide receiver a year ago, kind of a hybrid. Uh, wide receiver, tight end. Out there wide and uh, kind of gets a takedown. So another penalty that puts... Kentucky's offense back on their heels at the five yard line. And a stop here by Kentucky is going to give them great field position. That was Cummings in motion. Nice hole. And a good run out. Yeah, good blocking. Eight or nine for Cavassier Smoke. Because if Georgia could have got a stop on this Kentucky offense, remember it would have been third and short. But watch this offensive line. Every one of these five guys have started every game. Beautiful job by Fortner, number 79. The center reaching left and then getting to the second level and getting a key block. And it's third and short. Just a yard to go. They went sneak third and short last time. Not from the shotgun, not this time. Rodriguez behind. Levis. Gets the carry and doesn't get the first down. Might have lost a yard. Yeah, that kind of surprises me. That's a long time for these guys to hold the blocks. But this offensive line is facing up here in the middle. And, oh, the they dancing were, bear just kind of did. They were holding him, and it didn't matter. <laughs> Gee, did you see that play? One-armed it. Number 99, Jordan Davis danced through that double block and again showing why Dan Lenning says just keep doing that we'll be fine we'll be fine and a good fellow set to putt again and as Gary said if they get the stop they should get good field position it should be somewhere around midfield at least that's where Kiaris Jackson's camped out and this one off the side of his foot but it does take a decent bounce and it will be around midfield when Georgia goes back to work offensively Coming up tomorrow, NFL. Yeah, you, you watch this move inside right here. 340-pound movement up front by that no target. Bennett throws to the outside. A.D. Mitchell is going to have a first down. All right, that's the best throw by Stetson Bennett in the football game. Great anticipation and getting it out to the true freshman that time. Ball's on the way before 
Mitchell is even turning around. That's perfect timing. Outside shoulder, successful. A.D. Mitchell, an early enrollee, and when he showed up at the G-Day game, people were a little more relieved after George Pickens injured his knee and said, well, this guy's pretty good, too. And he is. Bennett loads, fires near side, throws a strike. That one's Lad McConkie. There's another name you wouldn't have heard a year ago. Well, I think that's the story of this Georgia offense right here. Number one team in the country. All these five stars all over that everybody recruits. But it's Bennett, Mitchell, McConkie that are moving the football down the field and has been the story of the offense for this team all year. Stetson Bennett likes to throw the outs and to the sideline. It's easy He's done to that see. really well. Yeah. When you're a little smaller, easier to see to the outside. Tough over the middle. First down just inside the 25. They have not gotten much in the running game yet today. Zamir White maybe got a yard and a half. Brings up second down as we approach a minute in the first quarter. Jermaine Burton checks. Jermaine Burton checks in for Georgia in a wide receiver spot. He's been a little bit banged up too, but in there today. Didn't play in the Auburn win. Second and eight. And it again fires to the near sideline. Bowers made the catch. A collision there with Valentine on the sideline. Short of the first down. Flag down. Yeah, I think they had an offensive lineman down the field. I think this was a maybe a RPO and the offensive lineman went too far downfield. An eligible player downfield. Offense. Number 73. Five-yard penalty. Replay second down. I think it was McClendon, the right tackle. It was kind of hard to see here with the wind in the official's microphone. I think McClendon thought it was a different play because he is way downfield. He's on the, what, 15-yard line getting called on it right there. He thought he was his uh, yeah. his uncle, Will Willie McClendon, yeah, all think, SEC tailback. I think he went 70s. back. He went back to Bennett and said, "I was wide open." I was wide play. open. Throw it to me. Second down at 13. Play action. Bennett waits too long. Hit as he throws and incomplete. And Pascal that time, number four, playmaking, defensive end tackle, gets to the arm of Bennett just as it's let's go. Comes around inside and wheels back. Gets it right on his right arm. And that stings. It did. I think that did hurt Bennett. I think you're right. He's trying to shake it off right now. You can see him grimace as he got hit. Really is a fumble on the field, recovered by the offense. The previous play is under review. All right, so it was ruled a fumble, not an incomplete pass. Uh, news to me. Let's see if I he starts his motion forward. It's close. It was ruled a fumble on the field, though. I thought it was starting to come forward myself. It's kind of a loopy motion. Gene Steratore, our rules official, with us for the first time today. Gino? I think in these plays with replay and the use of replay you're always safer to rule that a fumble all the time and in this case I think it is a fumble it just gets knocked loose in my opinion right before the arm starts forward right there and I think it's a good call of a ruling a fumble. Okay we'll take a look at it again at regular speed and see what it looks like. This is where I said incomplete pass because the ball went so far you know, forward. That is an interesting point by Gene he, he's told us before is that call it a fumble because then everybody keeps going if you call it incomplete pass the whistles are blowing and then you come back oh it was a fumble you know so it was covered by Kendall Milton by the yes. way was there any difference in where the ball would be spotted because of a fumble or incomplete pass? right now they have it spotted around the 19 so here's the call after a look from Stan Murray our replay official James Carter here's a call I know Stetson Bennett. After review, the ruling of a fumble recovered by the offense is confirmed. The third down from the spot of recovery. 
So it's third down at about five. Just want to make a point. Stetson Bennett came to the sideline and threw on the sideline through the whole review. So as Ness said, he looked like he got stung, and you could see him kind of wince. Goes to grab his right arm, looking for the ball, and he came into the sideline and threw the whole time. So the review actually helped Bennett kind of get over that stinger. Third down and a long four. Number four, James Cook in the backfield with Bennett, but they're gonna let the clock wind down now. That was to end the quarter, and they'll have more time to think about it and warm up. We played 15, scoreless, between the Georgia Bulldogs and the Wildcats of Kentucky in Athens. We start the second quarter, Home Depot SEC on CBS in Athens, with Georgia facing a third and five just inside the Kentucky 20-yard line. See if they can pay things off here in the red zone. James Cook switches sides. Stetson Bennett to throw. Fires a slant to Cook across the middle. Touchdown, walking in. Georgia leads. Nice design play. Kentucky shifts the running back, so there's instead of two receivers, there's three receivers. Start the play, running back to the backfield's gonna go angle route. Two Kentucky players overrun the play. Perfect throw, perfect call, execution on third down and five. Second receiving touchdown of the year for James Cook. A 19-yarder. Please set the game clock to 14.54. 14.54 in the game clock. The result of the play is a touchdown. JT Daniels on the sideline saying nice throw, Stetson. And James Cook, the recipient. Jack Podlesny in for the point after to try to cap off the Georgia drive. And it's up and good. So one play in the quarter number two. And Georgia caps off a 50-yard march in five plays. Used about two and a half minutes to get James Cook airborne. 7-0 Georgia. Deep in Kentucky territory, only got to midfield. And so on a short field, Georgia just needed five plays to go half the length of the football field to get their touchdown. And that was after the great punt by Georgia to stick it down there. Right, Camarda, who just kicked off, but that wasn't so great. <laughs> <laughs> he tried. Yeah, he tried. So I'll bring it out to the 35 knots time for Do Project Smarter, presented by the Home Depot. Take a look at that second down play again that was called a fumble. And Kentucky didn't play to the whistle. Jacquez Jones, number 10, get the ball. And Kendall Milton plays through the whistle. That was a five-yard gain, and it was a tough sequence for Jones because he was also the guy that overran the pass route for the touchdown to Cook on the play. Jacquez, transfer from Old Miss, as Gary mentioned. He led the Rebels in tackles last year. So Kendall Milton wisely covered that ball. James Cook. Did the final 19 yards, and it's 7-0 Georgia. Huge play by Milton, but Jacquez Jones was there for both of them. It didn't make the play. Rodriguez hit in the backfield and a loss of about four. Devontae Wyatt, that was smoke, actually, in the backfield. Well, I can tell you there are a lot of people here that says that Devontae Wyatt may be the best player on this defensive line. And if he shows that highlight film, you might get more believe in that. He had a career-high seven tackles against Kentucky a year ago, and a big one there, and a loss of four. And again, we're out of practice, and we go, this guy looks little. But uh, well, when they yeah. stand next to Davis, you <laughs> think they're all linebackers. Well, they run like linebackers, yeah, I will do. say that. Robinson in motion, a little flip to him. He bobbled it. Regained it, but only got about a yard, and Quay Walker has been in on about three tackles already here in the first half. So the first thing, as you look at this play, inside, kind of a pass, that's it, kind of pop pass inside. That counts as passing yards. 
But when you watch this Georgia defense, it doesn't look like the defense we've seen in many years. You could almost depend on Georgia playing man-to-man -man defense, free safety in the middle. Now this year, much more zone they're playing. Way Walker talking with us yesterday said we don't want anybody even near our end zone. He's doing his part so far today. Third down and 12. Levis pressure coming. He's going to run out of it. But he gets hammered at about the 37 yard line by a Kobe D. When we keep talking and I've heard Kirby do a bunch of interviews about why is this defense so hard to handle? Is it the shifting, the stunning, the experience? He goes, yeah, all of that counts. But we got good else? players. We got really good guys. <laughs> and they force another punt. Kobe Dean, the leader of that defense, makes the calls. In this case, makes the form tackle. Good fellow to punt. He got all of this one. Here's Jackson. He says, I'm getting out of the way. I don't want any part of this. And it gets to the end zone, so it'll bring it out to the 20. Georgia defense playing like they have through the first six weeks of the season here in week seven. Seven nothing Georgia leads, 1246 remaining in the first half. Now it's time for our hometown connection presented by T-Mobile. Jamie. Well, you have to talk about Stetson Bennett if you're going to talk about a hometown connection. Hailing from Blackshear, Georgia, you can tell by these unbelievable childhood photos that Bennett was destined to wear red, but the quarterback's path under center at Sanford Stadium hasn't been smooth, but he has truly won over the fans at Georgia with his grit. I mean, look at this on homecoming weekend. He's got people <laughs> short and tall clamoring for this young man, but like I said, it hasn't been a smooth path. He transferred away from Georgia. He returns. He's fighting for his quarterback spot he's gotten hurt but he's been there Kirby's walked him through the entire thing and hey six and oh with seven up, up seven nothing so far that's right if it's working keep working it and he has including a touchdown pass here today Georgia with three tight ends in the game they're all good ones Zamir White trying to take it outside Ooh. Another collision, a flag flies down one of those three tight ends might have got called yeah Valentine made the tackle. I'm not exactly sure. It was the left side of the line. It could have been offensive five, tackle, five, but is that left side? For sure. run. Holding. Offense. Okay. Number 86. Yep. Some of this 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Bain's first down. It's John Fitzpatrick. One of those three tight ends Gary talked about with a holding call. Fitzpatrick, Darnell Washington, and Bowers. You see 86 right on the left side of your screen. And yeah, yep, he got a lot of jersey. When, when the ball shifts, the defensive player sees it first. And you can hold inside, but when that disengagement happens, that's when you get called. Milton back in at tailback on a little delayed handoff. Kendall Milton broke a tackle across the 20. Kendall Milton down the sideline. Still going, and he might take it. Oh, they're going to say he stepped out. I think he was shoved just enough. And again, this is overrun again by this Kentucky defense. Coming from the inside, they overrun the play. Very aggressive, offensive line shifts, linebacker and safety both overrun the play. Cutback is there and shoved out just Ooh, Just enough. barely. There's the push and there's the right yeah, foot. That's a very dangerous play that time by Agent. What a nice game by Kendall Milton. Yeah, if you don't show, you, know, you got to tackle him right there. Got it out to the 47 in the first down, and a pickup of 35 on the carry. George is going to take a timeout, a little confused, and that'll be their second timeout. With 11.45 remaining in the first half. Georgia with a touchdown lead and on offense. By Indiana as we go back to Athens. All right, Zook, thanks. 7-0 here. After a 35-yard run by Kendall Milton, it's time to test your knowledge with today's Aflac trivia question. Aflac. Which is... Who are the three members of the 1950 Kentucky Championship team to be inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame? 
It's the first time since 1950 that Kentucky is 6 and 0. Oh. The coach on that team is one of those guys inducted into the Hall of Fame. Sets in bed on a keeper. This is what he does so well that maybe JT Daniels can't. Bennett, first down. Absolutely. He can see that slot coming in on the blitz from the field, and he's ready to take his momentum and work it against him. He knows that inside with that type of slot blitz from the run blitz from the outside, he's better off with his momentum going one way, just taking it behind him. Good read. So first it was Milton's 35-yard run, and now Bennett's keeper for 17 more. And George is at the 36-yard line of Kentucky. Another big opening for Cook, and Cook goes for about 12. I'll tell you this, Georgia offensive line, offensive line coach Matt Luke has them working as a machine. Everybody holding their block. Great job by Warren McClendon, number 70, the right tackle that time. Inside, Schaefer, number 54. Everybody maybe not blowing them off, but hanging enough with them, and then the great running back finds the gap. First down at the 24. Zamir White back in now. Georgia doing it on the ground, and Zamir White will score. Touchdown, Georgia. You talk about ground and pound, 35 for Milton, 17 for Bennett, 24 and a touchdown for Zamir White. You want to see some beautiful blocking? Watch them from the side right here just come down, 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 and then they pull around and it's open. White says, oh, thank you. I'll just take this thing and cut up, and there was no one in the middle of the field. But Lesney in for the point after. Up and good. Like watching the Red, Washington Redskins, Washington, where well, the football team, they were the Redskins back then. <laughs> back with the Hogs. Counter OT right there. Uh -huh. Down, down, and the Hog pulls around. 80 yard drive, five plays, almost all of it on the ground. Zamir White's seventh touchdown of the season, and it's 14 0 Dogs leading Cats. Fourteen to nothing here. Our AT and T 5G pylon cam, right there, showing you the Kentucky mascots at the goal line. That's where they would like to end up on this next drive. So far, Georgia doing their thing as the number one team in the country and number eleven yet to score. Fair catch. Taken around the seven yard line. So Georgia hasn't given up a point here in this half either, Gary. Well, they've got a veteran defense. Um, they practice hard. There's a lot of competition to play. When you get your chance on the field, they are making plays. As we said before, sophistication and a lot of great football players. I've been asked so many times, is this the best Georgia defense ever? And you know, you go back to the Irk Russell days and the junkyard dogs and all of that, but they weren't like these guys. No, but I question the secondary still. They lost six defensive backs from last year's yeah. team, and they've yet, no one yet has been able to get the ball in the secondary. Play action, Levis in trouble again, runs out of trouble again, and slides short of the first down, but he did get it out to the 32 yard line. The same thing here. The urgency of this Kentucky drive right now. You know, this happened to Arkansas here. All of a sudden, you know, you're in a game, you've got your game plan, and then all of a sudden you fall behind and you're not equipped to play the game you want to play against this defense. And they keep rotating guys in to yep. attack. Georgia hasn't sacked Levis yet, but they do have 22 sacks to lead the SEC. Rodriguez. And I don't know, I don't think he got there. It'll be third down and about two feet. Now Kobe Dean and Jackson from the secondary stopped him just shy. Tell you that time, it was Jalen Carter, number 88. You wonder, all right, is that is that Wyatt or is that Davis or is that Trayvon Walker? You're trying to make sure you got the right guy. Do they all play about the same? 
You saw the football and where the line to make. And now they'll come up under center. Dropped Levis it. dropped the ball, second effort, but was his knee down? And that's going to be the question. I don't. Well, one thing Kentucky did this time though is play through. Well, they're already marking it down and moving the chain, so he did not kneel down to get that football. Unless replay shows it down. Drops the step. They try to go hurry up. Well, his knee is down. Well, no, he didn't get it. His That's knee was down, but he didn't get the ball. By the time he gets control of it. He's standing <laughs> again. Wow, crazy play. See, the crowd didn't stick with the replay. Us, <laughs> us veteran guys. Yeah, right you, now, you, you, gotta, you gotta watch to the yes. whistle. <laughs> P.O. quick slant and drops. Man. Oh, he would have been off to the races. Brendan Bates, one of those tight ends, had a lot of room in front of him. Brendan Bates is kind of came on one of the surprises of spring ball. Bates this time just get there. RPO perfectly wide open. Perfect throw. Just one more thing. You gotta take it with you. He'll come out and be second down and ten. Quickly. A little bunch huddle and up to the line in a hurry. Here comes a blitz. Levis throws quick. Throws to the other tight end, and that's going to be Justin Rigg. The only thing that's different is Ness said it was a blitz. They did bring linebackers, but they played zone behind it. They kept the play in front of them, so they attack. They drop a defensive end, and they said, let's see you dump it off. We'll come up and make the tackle. In the pass, when you put on Georgia tape, it was man-to-man -man with those corners almost the whole game. Third down and four. Again, the crowd is lit up for this defense. They back out of the blitz. Levis throws and completes it. That's a first down to the 41 to Isaiah Epps. I'll tell you, Will Levis is not just a big old strong runner. I mean, he has got some skills. He still has a couple more years to enhance his game at quarterback. He'll get better under Liam Cohen. But you see that one right there. Nice anticipation. Guy in his face and perfectly placed football. Win to Georgia territory at the 40. Juton McLean behind Levis. They'll give the fake to him. And he's hit from behind, and the ball is out. Georgia had got it. Nolan Smith with the fumble recovery. Jalen Carter, I think, is the guy that caused it. Yes, it was. Jalen Carter earlier. Great move inside. I thought he tried to throw the football, though. I wonder if he threw it. And they're going to call this an incomplete pass. Carter comes. Yes, he did throw that football. He was strong enough to hold on to it. Remember, as Gene said, they're going to call fumble on the field. But watch. He holds on. Was that a throw or did it come out? I think his arm was moving forward. Let's see how this one goes. And Gene, come on in with us. I agree with Gary. It's just a lot of strength by the quarterback. He gets his arm knocked really hard, but he maintains possession of that football, holds on and squeezes it. And all he has to do is by one camera frame have that football moving forward in his possession, and then you have a forward pass. And my friends are going to say, Gene, sure, just because Stetson Bennett's 5'11", and this guy's big and strong, hey, you got to call him both ways. <laughs> well, Brandon Bates <laughs> It's also nothing against the quarterbacks, <laughs> Brad, Brad. I'm, I'm going with Gary. I'm but going I'll, with Gary. I'll tell you about it. The ball also hit the tight end Bates, number eight. On the play, maybe. It hit a Georgia player <laughs> it hit, in the stomach. Hit one in between the Walther number ninety. Right. At least he was behind him. But I just wonder, was the arm coming forward enough? A huge call for Kentucky to stay in this football game. It was called a fumble on the play, courtesy of Carter's hit and Nolan Smith's recovery. And so now we'll send it to Stan Murray, the replay official. George's dogs this season, five and a half points a game. They've allowed two touchdowns so far in six and a half weeks, uh, six and a half games, 201 After total the yards. The passer had control of the ball while the hand was going forward. 
will be second down from the 40-yard line. Oh, crowd loves that one. Kind of got the feeling that Kentucky had to have that call, <laughs> don't you think? Because I think George is going to kind of trot right back in. I think he had control of it. Was he throwing it? I don't know, but the ball and the hand was going forward. So they'll put it back at the 40, second down at 10. And I, 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 when you have a defensive front seven like this, most of those guys are going, good, I got another chance to tackle. That's exactly somebody. right. I was going to say, they're coming again, Will. Right. Love us. Don't worry. You haven't seen the last of them. Play action is going to swing it out in the flat. And good looking play. He got about nine out to Isaiah Cummings again. When we talked to offensive coordinator, we calling them for Kentucky. He said, you know, I don't expect we're going to run the ball for 200 yards. It's more like an NFL game. Can we run the ball for 135 and keep our play action game? Stay in the game so we have enough ability to see him on the sideline dealing with like he's going away. That was it. The Rams and I never, you know, this defense is pretty good. Yeah, they're pretty good. We placed in the NFL. They've got a manageable third down here. Let's see if Levis will come up under center. It's third down in a yard. Nope. Going to stay in the shotgun. Little flip to Robinson. Got the edge and got the first down. Only needed one and he got about four. Second time they've run that play for Wondell Robinson. Again, the importance of that play. Remember the fumble when two Georgia uh, Kentucky players had an opportunity to get the fumble and Milton got it. And then that forward pass, I mean, that kept Kentucky and kept their defense on the sideline. They're gassed, nine play drive now. If they can score here, they're saying, okay, finally we can take a breath, we're in the game. First down at the Georgia 28. Levis, here's a swing and a lateral to Smoke on the edge. And Cavassier Smoke got about eight yards before he's run out of bounds. When you're playing against a great defense, as an offensive coordinator, you've got to help your team. Find me a couple plays. Can we stay in the game by my play call sheet? Keep us in the game. And that was one right there. So a nine yard pickup, second down and one. And Kentucky's worked it to the Georgia red zone, where they're the best in the business as well, among their other defensive statistics. Levis, wheel route, and that's going to be interference, absolutely. Quay Walker yep. was out there on McLean. And it was actually a good penalty by Quay Walker on the play. If he didn't, that was going to be a touchdown. Nice design play. Quay Walker right here has the back on the, the wheel third. route. Defense, and number kind of seven. Mugs him on the play, the but the if he hadn't, it would have turned up. Automatic first down. Yeah, there was nobody in front of him. Nope. So first down by penalty now. And they spotted at the 18 yard line. Maybe the 17. 17. Smoke stays in there as the tailback behind Levis. Smoke straight up the middle. Good run down inside the 12. Trayvon Walker brought him down. We're down to the five minute mark and smoke comes up limping for that run. That'll bring Rodriguez back out there. Chris Rodriguez really hasn't gotten off to much of a start here in the first half. Fake it to him. Levis wants to throw back to him. Rodriguez makes the catch. A blocker in front down the sideline. And it's first and goal as he's knocked out of bounds inside the five. Again, Cohen, the offensive coordinator, going, we need this drive. It's almost it's like the last drive of the game when they have to score. He's pulling out every play he's got to get into the end zone right now. Well executed. 
go to the outside. Another wonderful call, execution by the Kentucky offense on this drive. And the pylon cam comes right at you. As this is where it gets tough sledding against Georgia, but this is only a yard away from the end zone. And this is where having a running big quarterback helps in Will Levis. First and goal at the one. Levis under center, Robinson in motion. And they fake the end around and they lob it to a wide open. Justin Rigg, the tight end for the touchdown. First points that Georgia has allowed in the second quarter all year. Part of the Ram offense is to use motion to confuse the secondary. When the motion comes across, Georgia has to adjust. Who do I got? I got number two, I got number three. And then the play action pass. Wait, who had that guy? Beautiful use of motion in the play call. Mark Ruffalo in for the point after. As Rigg, the tight end, will be part of the blocking package for this extra point. And it's up and good. So Kentucky got a break, got the call, but they took advantage of the call. 13 plays. Nice Only the third touchdown Kirby Smart's defense has given up all year. And for Will Levis, his 12th touchdown pass of the year, the offensive coordinator says that was a pretty good drive, I just called. 75 yards in 13 plays. A couple of those previous touchdowns were in second halves in uh, duty maybe against not the front line defense of Georgia. But that one was earned. Good looking drive of 13 plays and 75 yards to get the touchdown and cut it to seven. Well, we asked you a little bit earlier the trivia question, which was who are the three members of the 1950 Kentucky championship team to be inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame? I kind of gave part of that away in the open. I said it's been since 1950 when Bear Bryant was the coach at Kentucky. So he's one of them. <laughs> Bob Gain, big old number 70. And then Babe yeah. Perilli. Now, you have a special relationship I with do. Babe he was. He gave me my first professional job with the New York Stars. It should have been, that should have been the Aflac. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the, everybody did their job here and on the overthrow you can see right over here I think I mean Mark Stoops almost <laughs> took the flag out of the officials pocket on that one and threw it everybody did their job on that one well, that penalty led them down inside where Rodriguez took it down to the one and then the touchdown to the tight end rig and that's where we are right now with 324 remaining in the first half See if Stetson Bennett and Georgia can answer. White going to be dragged down for about a four-yard loss. Josh Pascal with a tackle. And if you put on, if anybody wants to put on a tape and watch somebody play some football, put on the floor to tape and watch Josh Pascal play football. He was all over the field, unblockable in that football game. He showed it again right there. Remember, Georgia gets the ball to start the second half. A huge drive for this Kentucky defense. James Cook in with Stetson Bennett in the Bulldog backfield. Third down and seven. Kentucky thinking about getting the ball back, trying to tie things up before halftime. Bennett running for his life and throws it to the sideline, and it'll be fourth down. Pascal again was given chase. So it's calmed the fans down here in Athens. And now you got to look out for that guy too when you punt it to him. And remember, this one will be into the wind. It'll hold up a little bit. Jake Camarda will be letting this one go from around the 18 yard line. Just got it away. And sort of bounces straight up in the air around the 31, maybe 32 yard line. 222 remaining in the half coming up at the half Adam PJ and Houston will have first half analysis and highlights from around the country on the Geico halftime report. So now if I'm Kentucky 
I'm being very careful. We got a really competitive guy in Will Levis playing quarterback for you. You've gotten, you can get out of the half probably here. You can't allow somebody trying to make a play out of his repertoire right here. Be careful. If you, if you get it to the 50, okay, but you don't want to take any chances. It's going to have Rodriguez come from the wide receiver spot back behind him from the 31. And it's Rodriguez going down for a loss of almost two. I think Will Levis is not, you know, he doesn't have, you know, a lot of football games in this offense under his belt. You know, does has he earned the right to just say, all right, let him go. Let him go two in it. You know, just take it. Well, no, not yet, in my opinion. Nolan Smith with that tackle for a loss of almost two. Levis 11 out of 14, 75 yards, and that short touchdown pass to his tight end on the last series. Remember, because of those two stoppages, Georgia only has one timeout left. Robinson across the field in motion. He's going to throw it back over there to him. He's wide open, but the Georgia defense closes in a hurry. <laughs> and I mean a hurry. De'Aaron Kendrick and Nolan Smith were waiting for him. Again, a safe play. Dialing up something, something good might happen, but not with the zone. And really good job that time by Kendrick, pointing out and kind of vicing the player, kind of cornering Robinson on the play. Kendrick, one of those guys that came, transferred through the portal from Clemson, where he started three years. So he's new to the Georgia defense. At the one minute mark, third down and 11. Rodriguez this time does go out as a wide receiver. Draw, quarterback draw. Kind of. <laughs> yeah, well, he's going to draw a feed <laughs> from Carter and company. Pretty much now, nothing really too fancy with Georgia only having one timeout. Kentucky said, we're going to play this safe. Now, Georgia uses it right here, but only 47 seconds left in the half. So that sack was number 23, forces a punt when we come back. So a punting situation coming up. Georgia has used its last time out. Good fellow will kick. Got to believe Georgia's going to go for the block kick here. Even if you interfere with him, rough him, no big deal. Yaris Jackson waits back at the 20. Few issues today, but he bobbled that one as well. Boy, Harris Jackson's having a rough afternoon. That has been excitement in the back of punt return. First one he didn't call for a fair catch, and then he bobbled the next two. And then he got out of the way of one. <laughs> He's just happy he found the handle on that one. Let's take a look right now at our Dr. Pepper SEC standings. In the East, these are the two top teams, both undefeated. One ranked number one in the country, one number 11. Tennessee's got a game tonight with Ole Miss. First ever matchup of 6-0 SEC East teams against I, each other. And I think the Georgia fans will understand this. You don't want anybody to make a huge mistake. Sets embedded here at the end of the half. But I think Mark Stoops has to be satisfied with where he's good. It could have got ugly on that one last fumble that went his way. So Georgia with a touchdown lead. Both teams head to their respective locker rooms. Georgia. At home, up by a score as we have played two quarters officially right now. And let's find out if Mark Stoops is satisfied. Jamie. Coach, you said you had to play near perfect to beat these guys. How far off are you to stay in this game? Uh, we're not, we're far from perfect, that's for sure. A lot of mistakes. Um, just our awareness, you know, early on, we had a lined up illegally, we had a good play. Uh, this is a very good football team, and, and we have to have this one focused execution, and we're not doing that yet. We saw creativity offensively to score that touchdown. Will we see more of that to get in the end zone? Uh, there's going to be definitely some, and uh, we got to continue to play physical, do what we do, uh, but you got to try to mix it up, yes. Coach, thanks. Thank you. Mark Stoops. 
his team down a touchdown to the number one team in the country at the end of the half. 14-7 Georgia. We send it to Adam Zucker in our New York studio now for the Geico Halftime Report. Zuck. Home Depot, SEC at CBS. Heads into quarter number three between the Hedges and Athens. And the top-ranked team in the country, Georgia, leading number 11, Kentucky, 14-7. to Kentucky to kick off to open the third quarter. Kiaris Jackson back as a kick returner. He's had some issues today on fielding punts cleanly. And he lets this one go, so that'll bring it out to the 25 for the Georgia offense. Welcome back to the booth, Brad and Gary, Brian, David, George, Barb, Haley. <laughs> you know, it's about what we expected. Number one defense in the country and number two defense in the SEC battling it back and forth. So if I'm the two coaches, first of all, if I'm Mark Stoops, I'm going, as Jamie said, did you play perfect? No, guys, we didn't play perfect, but we don't have to. We just right. have to play Kentucky football. And if I'm Kirby, I'm going to go, I told you, there's going to be games when we have to fight to win this championship. This is one of those games. This is the inside track to make it to Atlanta as the East champion. If you win this one, you're in the pole position in the race for early December. And we've still got a half a race left. Stetson Bennett, first play of the half, fires it out to Darnell Washington, much like he did early in the first half. Let's check in with Jamie. Stetson Bennett must have just read my mind because Kirby coming out of the half said, Stetson Bennett, he's doing I, but that was better than I. His, hit, his arm got hit in the first half. Kirby said he was bothered by that, but he did settle in. He's got to keep making good decisions. Kirby said defensively, we have to get off the field third down. I also asked him, will Kiaris Jackson continue to return punts? He said, yeah, why not? Look at that flag. You see how windy it is today? I said, all right, coach, my hair knows how windy it is. <laughs> A 16-yard pickup on the first play of the quarter. And now back to the ground and no gain on that one. Maybe a loss. Josh Pascoe again yeah, no, on the stop on Zamir White. Now, I'm not saying he is Aaron Donald, but he's smallish as a defensive tackle. And he's a tough target. He runs around a lot of blocks. He powers, powers. And then all of a sudden, the big Georgia offensive lineman said, he's coming at me. And then he kind of zips around. That was one of those plays. Nice play by Pascoe. James Cook now back in the backfield for Georgia. He's got one of their touchdowns today off the pass from Stetson Bennett. Bennett in trouble. Gets it to Bowers, a tight end. First grab for him today. And the freshman's off to the races. Bowers will take it all the way. There's a flag down. Bowers in the end zone. There's a flag back at the 35. Yep. I think with Salyer, number 69, it's going to get the clip on this one. I think it could have been Schaefer, but I think Bowers was going to score anyway. Holding. Offense number 54. 10 yard clinic from the spot of the foul. Result of the play is first down. Justin Schaefer is a guilty party 54. Gary's going to circle him right there. And Bowers would outrun this. No need to grab and yank down like yep. he did. And uh, Bowers, the, you know, one of those unnamed guys that make this offense go. And negates a 59-yard touchdown. Yusef Corker is the injured Wildcat. We'll take a timeout and be right back. Yusef Corker trying to jog it off over there on the sideline, shaking up on that last play. Two-time captain for Kentucky. Yeah, one more look. It happened right there. You see Yusef gets kind of thrown off by Justin Schaefer right there. When he yanks him over, looked to me like his left knee, ankle, or something got strained on the play. Corker, one of the super seniors on this Kentucky team. So that 59-yard would-be touchdown is not. And they bring it back to the first down after the penalty. The 44. Here's an end around. McConkey. McConkey and McConkey weaving through people down to the 29 yard line. Lad McConkey, little guy with a big game. Well, Stetson Bennett was out in front of the play, but Luke McConkey barely needed him. Again, on back to back plays, you saw the speed by Brock Bowers and Luke McConkey. Two game breakers and I thought the opening play was interesting by Georgia also. They were throwing short all game and they went deep. McConkey was a scout team guy a year ago, now a starter in the receiving core. James Cook trying to take it wide. 
And then he got about three. Yeah, Ladd McConkey has been their playmaker or in the secondary sure with his receivers. It's our first half game trend. Stetson Bennett, 5 of 10, 76 yards. The touchdown to Cook. Will Levis, 13 of 16. And the touchdown pass to Rig is tight end. And the Georgia defense allowed a touchdown in the first half for the first time this year. And now Georgia on the opening march offensively for them of the third quarter has taken it to the Wildcat 27. Yeah, blitz look here from this Kentucky football team. Looks like they're going to get it off the edge right here. Nobody in the middle of the field. Jordan Wright's a guy that's sneaking up there that Gary circled. Here they come. Georgia picks it up brilliantly again. Here's the long ball. McConkey. No, it's Bowers, and he's got it. Touchdown, Georgia. That one's going to stand. There is a flag down, but I think it's interference on Kentucky. Holding. Defense, number 14. That's what it is the result of the play is a touchdown. This was too easy of a read. Stetson Bennett knew he had man-to-man -man all the Nobody in the middle of the field. He knows he's got man-to-man. -man. Right away, he knows he's going to Bowers. No center fielder. He can lay it up in the field, and he goes and gets it. Great catch, great throw. High points the ball and hauls it in. Hot Lesney in for the point after. You can't tell the quarterback the defense before the snap. Stetson Bennett knew what it was. He knew he had a great matchup on the wheel route, and he went to it. They're reviewing right now whether he had possession. All the way to the ground. We're going to send Brock Bowers right into your TV and wherever you might be watching. Got both hands on it there. Hits the deck. I don't see any bobbling, but we'll wait and see what Stan Murray thinks. I'll tell you what, Tyrell Agent stayed with the play and fought all the way through on this play. Kept fighting, kept fighting. Tried to rake it down yes. out of there. Did the ball move? Because you could see Bowers continue. Agent thinks it's incomplete. Bowers kind of hides whether he caught it or not. His Might left hand came off of it. His left hand came off. Let's bring Gene in. Gene, what do you see? I agree. I agree with you, Gary. I think just Bowers' reaction makes it feel suspicious. Now, yes. what we have to think through is he possesses the ball airborne, and he really is never upright through this. So he's falling, basically, when he comes back to the ground. That means he has to survive the ground throughout that entire process. There's firm possession here, but he is remaining and falling. I don't see visual evidence to overturn this, though, guys. Touchdown. Touchdown. And Brock Bowers is thinking, what do I have to do to get in the end zone here cleanly? Well, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> it's his fifth touchdown catch of the year for the freshman. Stetson Bennett's second scoring toss today, and it was a beauty. So his really own his own body kind of hid the best look at it. And there's nothing they could do. You can't just assume the ball moved. And there's the battery right there. Brock Bowers, fifth touchdown catch. But Lesney's extra point is up and good. And again, with all of the start of this season, who thought the key players would be Bowers, Bennett, and McConkey? Well, if you remember the Atomic Dogs music from back in the 70s, we got a little bit of that going on right here. Stetson Bennett says, I don't remember that at all, but I do like my tight end. It's 21 7. Homecoming here in Athens, part of the parade. Kentucky's been a homecoming opponent of Georgia several times. Uh, this probably wouldn't have been what they were thinking of, bringing in the number 11 team in the country on homecoming, but so far they're handling their business, 21 to 7. Camarda to kick off. And fair catch taken around the six-yard line. They'll bring it out to the 25 for Brock Bowers, a freshman. 
out of California. Sensational season so far. He's got two catches today. Would have had actually two touchdowns if they didn't take that 59 yarder away. He's closing in. He's about 13 receptions shy of Randy McMichael's freshman record for a tight end in receptions. And I had to mention that because I talked to Randy this morning and I said, kid's probably going to catch about seven balls. And he said, Ness, please. I don't want that record to fall. I think it might, Randy, before the season's over, but he's a heck of a player. And Kirby Smart says, I wish I had about 20 of those guys. First down, Kentucky from the 25. Levis, quick throw out in the flat. Short gain for Cummings. Isaiah Cummings picked up about four. Now. Mark Stoops got to kill his team. We got to keep our poise here. And got to have an answer, too. Yes, we keep our poise. We don't have to score two touchdowns in one play, two plays. Let's just do it the same way we did the last time we had the ball. Let's run our offense. Our offense is good enough. Empty backfield for Levis. George is coming with a blitz from Walker. Passes knocked out of the hands of Rodriguez. Incomplete. And Kendrick was over there defensively. Will Levis, his day so far. And he's done a nice job getting out of some would be sacks. And the touchdown pass was a short one of a yard to his tight end. He's got a nice, quick, compact release. I'll tell you that right now. He, no wind up necessary. Dude is put together, too, yes, isn't he? he is. <laughs> It's that mayonnaise and the coffee. I, I guess. Start that. Man, or eating bananas without peeling them. <laughs> Something's working for him. Third down and seven. Levis, plenty of time this time, and zips it down the middle. First down out to the 40. Whoop, the ball came out. Incomplete. He called it incomplete, but boy, I'll tell you, that offensive line for Kentucky did their job. The story has been. That defensive line for Georgia, but that time, plenty of time, perfect throw, maybe a little bit behind, but you expect your guy to keep, come up with that catch. And Epps just couldn't hold it. And, and good defense, staying yep. with the play. Again, those DBs stay with it, it's never done. That was Kendrick again, who made that play. Here's Jackson, back as the punt returner, as Kirby told Jamie, why not? Don't you see how much wind's out there when they get that ball up in the air? See how he handles this one. Smooth as silk on that one. Tierris Jackson. And he's hauled down at about the 27. Fielded that one cleanly and gave it back to the offense with 11-16 remaining third quarter. And Georgia, two touchdown lead. Let's take a look at our GMC game changers. And one of the things that stands out is there are a lot of them on this team. Running back James Cook, one of three game changers in that backfield. We're going to see them all. Kendall Milton can go either direction. He cuts it inside and almost takes it to the house. And then finally, Samir White just follows great blocking, sticks it in the end zone. If you won't, don't want to run the ball, you go to one of those tight ends because they play a lot of them. They've got three good ones. Kirby's been doing some good recruiting. Yeah, I'd say. Those three tailbacks, actually four tailbacks on this team. Kenny McIntosh not playing today. He's been injured a little bit. but So all three of the guys have made big contributions so far out of the Georgia backfield. Right now, it's Zamir White in the backfield with Stetson Bennett. First and 10 at the 28. This is Amir White straight ahead. Corker brought him down after a four or five yard game. So Brad White, the defensive coordinator for Kentucky, has gambled, I think, basically one time. The blitz was too easy to read. He got burned for it. So now how does he adjust? Because one more score before Kentucky can score, this thing could get out of hand for him. Georgia with a big shift. All three tight ends go from wide to in tight on the right. On second and six. They fake the pitch that way and they throw it that way. Zamir White doesn't catch a lot of balls out of the backfield, but he's got this one and he's got a lot of yardage at the end of it. Great run after the catch. And now you hear the chance of Zeus All right, for so Zamir White. I'm sorry, Brent. Excuse me. I tell you, this is not easy. You think, oh, come on, make the tackle. You've got an elite running back one-on-one, -on -one, and that's a tough open field tackle. The second one, 
maybe not as good should have been broken down but you get a guy one on one in open field I think that's called a successful play call for that's Georgia only Zamir White's second reception and I kind of wonder why they don't swing it out to him more because when he gets that 230 pounds coming yeah. after you and you're out there on the corner going I don't think I want to tackle this guy that badly Milton comes back in now Bennett throws completes it to Fitzpatrick perfect throw and Fitzpatrick stuck it in there another tall tight end who just snatched it away from the defender all right so what Jamie told us after halftime from Kirby Smart is right on a little bothered by that arm that he got hit early in the game but right here you can't throw a ball any better than this the touchdown throw and he comes back with even a better throw to the sideline first down at the 33 nine and a half minutes to go third quarter Play fake, Bennett plenty of time, fires near sides, got his man, A.D. Mitchell, out of bounds just inside the 11. I don't know if Mitchell broke his rod out or he was trying to do it. I think they were trying to hit the crossing route and then Mitchell comes back. Watch, I think he's trying to go to the post, gets stuffed, and then just comes back out and Bennett finds him. To the 10 yard line goes Milton. Actually, got inside the 10. Salyer helping him up there. Salyer playing with a kind of a bad knee, but toughing it out today. One of those big offensive linemen for Georgia. There's Matt Luke in the background there with Kirby Smart, the offensive line coach, former head coach at Ole Miss. So they're right at the 10 yard line right now. On this drive. Stetson Bennett's been perfect. Looks out for Bowers again. Bowers out of bounds at the five. Well, right now, this offense is in sync. Offensive coordinator Tom Munkin is believing that his quarterback is in rhythm and he's dialing up anything he wants right now. That first call of the second half, when he hit Washington down the middle of the field, I think loosened him up yeah. as a play caller. There's they, Todd. They can get a first down, Georgia can, at the one-yard line. Third down and four. Milton on the pitch. Going to be dropped for a loss. Nice play defensively by Quadre Mosley. Yeah. Yeah, that looked a little little weird that time. That was a nice play by Mosley to the outside. Just kind of runs around the block. Nobody really on him. Might have been a busted assignment that time by Brock Bowers, number 19. They got three tight ends, and they were 0 for 3. No, none of the three went after him. Jack Budlesny's 9 out of 12 so far on the season. This will be a 26-yard field goal attempt to try to stretch Georgia's lead. Out of a Camarda hold. But Lesney splits the uprights right down the middle. And it was 7-21 remaining in the third quarter. Georgia adds to their cushion. 24-7 dogs. Back Iowa ball, guys. All right, still Purdue by 10 there. It's Georgia now by 17 here. Don't forget, later in the game, it's the play of the game. Presented by Jersey Mike Subs. Coming into the day, there were, or into the weekend, there were 13 undefeated football teams. We have two of them here. Number one against number 11, and Georgia in the lead. Bring it out to the 25. Speaking of those undefeated teams, one of them is Wake Forest. They've been uh, this far undefeated since World War II, I don't think. They play Army next Saturday noon Eastern on CBS Sports Network. They look to remain undefeated as they hit the road to take on Army and uh, teams to keep an eye on. Iowa, highest ranking but in trouble. Cincinnati, highest poll ranking program in history. There's quarterback controversy in Norman and Wake Forest. It was 1944, I guess, the last time they were this good this late in the season. Rodriguez, he has had some tough sledding today. Got about a yard and a half. So it's three plays to 14 plays for Georgia. Three and out last time, but of the three plays, two drop passes by Kentucky that could have kept it alive. Keep your poise. It's not the great plays sometimes. Yeah. It's the regular plays you got to make. 
138 yards to three yards. This is where you get your defense in trouble. They had that drive in the second quarter. They need a drive now. Second down and nine. Levis. Quick throw, high, but got it to rig the tight end. And it's going to bring up third down and about four. That was a good catch that time. We talked about the drop. Justin Rigg went up and got that. That was kind of a wild, hard throw, and he came up with it. Kirby mentioned get off the field on third down. It was four for nine at the end of the half, four for ten now, so here it is. Challenging his defense get off the field on third down. That's Dan Lanning, the defensive coordinator, right behind him in the black shirt. Third down at four. George is coming. Levis hesitates. And he who hesitates goes down. Loss of a yard. Trayvon Walker and company meet at the quarterback. Great job that time by this secondary for Georgia. The safety takes the wheel route. That's where they were trying to go for the ball. Nowhere to go. Man to man coverage. Dan Lanning dialed up the blitz with man that time instead of zone, and it worked. And again, another sack by the Georgia defense. There's Dan Lanning. The defensive coordinator and it forces a punt. Man, this is a deep one. And it's going to get to the end zone. Too deep. Georgia brings it out. Good fellow has been a busy punter. Five minutes and change remaining in the third quarter. Well, 50 years ago, the last time Kentucky was 6-0, Harry Truman was a president. The Yankees won the World Series. Casey and Whitey there. All the King's Men was the Academy Award winner for Best Picture. And the last time Kentucky football, 6-0, Bear Bryant was the head coach. And they finished 11-1. If they don't rebound here, they'll have a one next to their six when they go back to Lexington today. They've got 20 minutes to do something about it. And Georgia works from the 20-yard line after having gone on a 63-yard drive last time to get the field goal. Ben, Stetson Bennett looking for more. Going deep. Mitchell he overshot him by about five yards. Cedric Dorton is back there covering. One on one to the outside. They've been going deep, deep. Middle of the throws. This time they tried to go deep. Again, just a little bit of a bump. As that ball was in the air by Cedric Dorrington. Uh, Might have misdirected him a little yep. bit. Quarterback comparison. Bennett starting to add up some numbers now. Sal, you're back in the game at left tackle, by the way. On second and ten, James Cook. Only got a couple, maybe three. That'll bring up third down. James Cook, I think everybody thinks hey, he's a guy we throw swing passes and stuff too. I think people don't realize he's been a pretty tough runner this year in between the tackles. He's averaging five yards per rush attempt this year. The best on the team. He comes out. Kendall Milton goes back in. On third down and seven. In Georgia with a bunch group of receivers to Stetson Bennett's right, including Bowers, the tight end. And he's going to try to run out of trouble, and he can't. Good job by the Kentucky defense. Yeah, that was a nice design, wasn't it? Fake the blitz inside. Then they back off like they're going to go away. They come back, come back, and then they delay blitz on the play. DeAndre Square is the guy that's going to get credit for most of that. Number five, good job. By the Brad White defense of Kentucky forcing a Jake Kamar to punt. Dell Robinson's just going to get out of the way. Not one of Kamar's better efforts. And they're going to spot it around the 45 yard line. So good field position for the Kentucky offense after their defense does its job. All this month, Paramount Plus presents Peak Streaming.
screaming, that's what I said, stream classic horror movies <laughs> like The Ring, World War Z, and Friday the 13th, Part 3 and 4, plus new thrillers like A Quiet Place, Part 2, and on October 29th, catch your premiere of Paranormal Activity next to Ken. Peak screaming all month long on Paramount Plus as you look in Athens Sanford Stadium where Kentucky's trying to get back in this game with good field position. Levis off the plate fake, fires and into some traffic and he threw a dart I love to Marcus Harris. Yes, he did. Rolling to his left. Watch him get his body set and deliver that pass to Harris. Turn, 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 set, turn, fire, bang. Man, he's got a quick release. Right on the money. And a pickup of 17. Inside the Georgia 40. Just what Kentucky needed on the first snap after the good field position. As we approach three minutes in the third quarter. Robinson in motion. They fake the toss sweep. They throw it out complete again. And again, it's Harris. And another first down for Kentucky. Will Levis has a bright future. You know, when first watching him from afar, watching highlights, you see him jump over people and do crazy stuff on TikTok. You think, you know, this is one of these guys that are just a bulldozer. But he's got some talent. Look at that throw. Just a snap out there. So. He learns how to play every part of the quarterback position. He's going to be dangerous. 17-yard pickup, then a 15-yard pickup. And just like that, inside the Georgia 25 for Kentucky. Levitz lofts it to the corner for the end zone. And Robinson, the intended receiver, no flags. Latavius Brown, uh, Brini was covering back there for Georgia. And that was a good matchup that time. That was where the ball should have gone. Latavius Brini playing the slot, number 36. They've got their fastest guy on them. And Robinson says, uh, I could have ran faster here, but. <laughs> Second down and 10. Especially the student section down in that end trying to make it difficult on the Wildcats. They keep it on the ground. Maybe a little bit of a surprise. Cavassier smoke. I'll tell you the two parts of this defense that Georgia has been good at is controlling the two playmakers, Robinson and Rodriguez. Neither one have been able to get loose for anything at all. When you look at Robinson, I mean, he's just five catches for 19 yards. That's basically nothing. A couple of those were those little hot pass yes. things where you just sort of hand off to him. Third down and eight. And the leading rusher, seven rushing yards. Georgia held Auburn to 46 yards on 29 carries last week. Levis, screen pass to the tight end, Rig, and he's still going, first and goal. So he's been big today, number 83. So 83 was hid, hid in the fullback position. He's right here, second back out to the weak side, the screen pass that forces that Georgia team to handle a different number to the weak side. That's kind of the old fullback screen back yep. in the day. You play it with a tight end now. Kentucky up to the line quickly at the 10, first and goal. They'll have to earn it because they're right at the 10 yard line. Levis rolls, fires back across his body again, in and out of the hands of Robinson, incomplete. And he's shaken up. I tell you, you can't blame a quarterback who's having a good day and he's triggering. But on this one, I really thought on first down. Levis could have run the ball. Now, he had a guy. Let's see how open it was for him. He had space. You can understand that throw, right? A little more accurate. Could have had it. Space coming across. That's Lewis Seen Seen on staying him. Yep. with him. That could have been a touchdown. It was a good enough throw. And does he land oh, on his shoulder? Either that or hopefully it's just the wind knocked out of him. He sort of landed on the ball as well. So Wendell Robinson down, and we'll check on him when we come back. 53 seconds remaining third quarter. Back in Athens as we 
near the end of the third quarter. Wandell Robinson, the wide receiver for Kentucky, looked like he had the wind knocked out of him. However, he's kept his helmet, and he looks like he could be available again. Yeah, he's snapping that helmet right now, Jamie. He just said to somebody on the side, and I'm okay. But he's not in there on second down and goal for this play. Levis wants to throw back to Rodriguez. Does, and George is there to meet him, and it's N'Kobe Dean. <laughs> first noticed N'Kobe Dean a year ago as being an outstanding player, but he's taken it to the next level this year in 2021. I mean, there's been some great middle linebackers here, but N'Kobe Dean is doing it all right now. Smelling out the play, running through two blockers, and making the play. When that ball was in the air, I said, if they get the block on 17, it's a walk-in. They didn't get it. They didn't get it. <laughs> Third down and goal. Now with the ball back at the 15. Levis throws it in the dirt. The pressure was too much. And a flag down. Flag came in. Chop block is a preliminary signal. Well, Rodriguez collisioned with them, and they're going to call it a chop block. Personal foul. Chop block. Offense. For 51 to 24. That's going to be his decline. It was over the players fourth down. So they declined the penalty. And, and, and right now, Mark's two has to make this a, a field goal attempt right here. Make it a two-score game. Well, Matt Ruffalo four out of five on the year his longest has been 45 and this one won't be that long it's only going to be about 33 33 yard field goal attempt try to cut into the Georgia lead Matt Ruffalo and it's blocked Georgia got it. It might have been Jordan Davis or Devontae Wyatt, but back comes the football with Jackson. They're right in the same spot, 99 and 95. They split that gap. God, they can get through cracks, those guys. Coming right through, both of them. Look at the two guys right there. <laughs> I think both of them could have got it. Both are laying out. Look at that. A red wall coming at you to block it. That's the way the quarter ends with a flurry from the dog defense again. We played three, 24 to 7, Georgia. We start the fourth quarter in Athens, 24 to 7, Georgia at home and Sanford Stadium rocking during that last three minutes, and those guys were. Party in over there on the side. They think they don't love playing together. All Davis three of them. Wyatt and Walker and Carter. And <laughs> there was a big hug fest after that block field goal. Georgia from the 18. Zamir White broke one tackle, broke a second tackle. Let's go back to the defense on that last drive. Second and three from the 10 yard line. Nicobe Dean, watch him get through three blockers right there. One, two, three. There's Nicobe Dean. If somebody gets a block, it's a walk in. And then from there, your guys take over. The big fellas. The block field goal. And now the offense with the ball for the second down and four. White. It'll be about two yards shy of the first down, third down and short. And that block field goal. I mean, I was thinking on second and three, I, I was thinking like, do you think you've got four downs to call it? Yeah. Are you going to take the field goal on third down and then you don't even get three points out of the good drive? You know, like Quay Walker told us yesterday, we don't want anybody near our end zone, much less in it. And they prevented the three-pointer. Third down, toss to Zamir White. Try to cut it outside. He might have it. It's going to be close. Jaquez Jones brought him down. 
Yeah, he came, he smelled out to play. Jones gets there, but falling forward for enough. Just enough. They'll move the chains. James Cook comes back in. Jameer White gets a breather. And right now, you know Kirby Smart is saying, make sure that we take this play clock down each time. Got a Kentucky player down. I think it's Quandre Mosley. Might just be cramps. It's not that warm today, but they've been out there a lot. Senior out of Brunswick, Georgia, and Georgia native here. Playing in his home state. And we'll stretch him out and we'll be right back. The long ball. It's Bowers and he's got it. Touchdown, Georgia. That was a look at our Ally Bank game recap. Stetson Bennett, 206 yards passing, a couple of touchdowns. Levis has a touchdown pass. The Georgia tight ends have been big. And then maybe the biggest play of the game by the Georgia defense. And Gary, there's been a ton of them. A <laughs> blocked field goal. A blocked field goal right after the Kobe Dean's play, but again. As we've been told all week, there's so many good players out here. It's just guys taking turns, right. making big plays. I'm wondering if Mark Stoops might challenge. It was a third down call on that first down. It was pretty close. Was his knee? It's a big call because they need the ball back. Did the knee go down before he went across the line? Might be worth it because they need Kentucky the ball back badly. The injury actually gives people a chance to look at that right. play before. And they're going to leave it as is right now anyway, unless Coach Stoops just walked up to the did. I think linesman he did. and did Time out. timeout. And what right now he's going to decide whether he wants to challenge it. Challenge, challenge the, the spot, spot is yes. what he just said. Challenging the spot and again, these are tough, but in this circumstance, I think it's worth it The Kentucky head coach is challenging a ruling that the runner made the line of the game on the previous play that play is under review So the yellow line is where Samir white needs to get and Appears maybe his knee was down before his body crossed that line. It's really, really close. Left knee comes, the left shin and knee come down. And Is he, his left part of his butt down? Yeah, right. Maybe there. Gene, what do you think? I think the backside is down, and remember too, it's where the football is when that first body part is down, and he's got that ball kind of behind him, tucked in his right arm. Yeah. So that ball is behind where his body is as well, and I believe he's about a half a yard short from the angle that I see, guys. Now remember that that yellow line is not like the goal line; it's an approximation. Do they go by that, or how do they kind of put piece this together, Gene? Now, they, they won't use it officially, uh, Gary, but it looks to be, uh, you know, a pretty strong line there, indicative of where it would be. Gotcha. The post where we see the SEC uh, yep, logo yep, I see is the, the official line to gain. Yes, so uh, I think they're pretty lined up uh, and matched well. And, uh, and to me, it does look short, guys. And Mark having a close look. He's seen it several times. And, and again, you know, these, these are tough to, to get overturned, but in this instance, I think it's worth the challenge. Fourth quarter, down by 17. Need the ball badly. And this one's from actually the end zone. Yeah, it looks like his rear end is down before and, and he Gene, crossed the line. And as Gene said, the ball is in his right hand, which makes sense. He's running to the right. That's where it should be. Georgia fans are saying, why are you running running wide anyway? <laughs> give, it, give it to Zamir White right up the middle. And 
Fans frustrated because it's taking a little bit of time here. And without the cramp, they might not have done the. That's by, exactly by the right. By Kentucky, gave them just enough time. Here comes the call. After review, the ruling on the field stands. The result of the play of the first down. Ah, uh, well, we missed that one, or at least. Our replay official Stan Murray did not feel the way that we did. And that's the tough part. It's a bit more arbitrary. Kind of a wry smile from uh -huh. Mark Stoops right there. A little more arbitrary than the goal line where you all know what we're dealing with there. Still, I think, worth the gamble. I know those timeouts, you know, those challenges are, I don't know, maybe, was this a replay? Did they stop it or did Stoops do it? I thought he took a timeout. He did. He, did. he took a timeout. So. He's still not happy, and as Gary said, it's kind of a sarcastic smile. It was a challenge, and it was lost. And so Georgia maintains possession. Keeps going on offense here with the first down. Yeah, and that's an important couple minutes for Georgia to hold on to the football. Play action. Bennett down the middle, throws a strike again to Bowers into Kentucky territory. Brooke Bowers again, another big catch. Condensed formation. Bowers knows he's got outside technique the whole way by Cedric Dorton. The cornerback on the tight end, and Bowers is being, you know, I mean, he's a hybrid tight end. He's big and strong but he runs you know like a wide receiver four catches now including a touchdown new breed tight end they have yeah. all over the NFL these days Kirby Smart told us yesterday the moment is never too big for Bowers here's James Cook and he's got a big gain all the way down to the 23 Georgia rolling now with 1240 to go and they're threatening again this time they just go behind the big guys Tight end still, and remember, this Georgia team puts two tight ends in. It's Fitzpatrick that time taking the end man on the line of scrimmage with the block by the tight end. Use of the tight end package. They've got three great ones. Yep. They use all three of them. First down at the 24. Nine plays of 20 plus for Georgia. James Cook weaves his way inside for a couple. Invesco brings you today scholar athletes Luke Fortner for Kentucky John Fitzpatrick has had a couple big catches today for Georgia Invesco proud to support student athletes on and off the field with a donation of a thousand dollars to Kentucky and Georgia's general scholarship funds the time is becoming a factor if you're a Kentucky fan and that running game by by Georgia over 150 yards now running the ball they've been able to do whatever they want in this game Kendall Milton back in there. One of those three tailbacks used today. They fake it to him. Bennett's going to loft it. Bowers has got it. Touchdown, Georgia again to the tight end. The moment's never too big for him. I guess not. How about Bowers adjusting to this ball? When he turns around and finds it, the pass is halfway there. He gets collision right here by, I think it's Weaver, number 13. And then balls up there, he turns around. The ball was in within six yards of him. And he reacts to that ball when it's in the air. What a throw, yes. But the reaction by Bowers, what an athlete this guy is, wow. huh? And Leslie missed an extra point for the first time for Georgia in about 365 extra point attempts, which was an ongoing record until right there. But they'll take the six anyway. Bowers, what a huge game for number 19. Brock Bowers, five catches, 102 yards, and two touchdowns. And Stetson Bennett says, yeah, I threw it before you look back. <laughs> and did he? An incredible reaction. Of course, the pass had to be perfect, and it was. But incredible reaction once Bowers turns back and finds the football. I mentioned 
That's not pretty. I mentioned the extra point was missed. Georgia had an ongoing NCAA record. 363 extra points made before Podlesny had the last extra point hit the right upright. So all good things have to come to an end, I guess. And that's one of the small things that didn't go right for Georgia today. Take a look at this. We froze the play when Bowers actually looks back at the quarterback on the play. Now watch. He's, there's the football. It's more than halfway there. Again, the play. He gets jammed. He's fighting. He's fighting. He turns up. He looks back. And the ball's right out. <laughs> Beautiful job. And from our AT&T 5G pylon cam, here's our look for number 19 heading towards you and then across the goal line for Georgia's second touchdown catch of the day. And now Kentucky, it's an urgent need. Robinson, they try to get it out to him and he might have lost a yard. Adam Anderson is out there, so is Quay Walker. And it's desperation time now with a 23-point Georgia advantage for the Wildcats. Remember, they lost one of their timeouts, too, by the challenge from Mark Stoops on the last Georgia drive. So they got two timeouts from him. Delayed blitz from Quay Walker. Levis throws it right where he vacated and got it to his other tight end, Bates. But it's only about a five-yard gain. They'll bring up third and five. All season long, Georgia has not given anybody anything. Three points to Clemson, seven to UAB, 13 to South Carolina, back-to-back -back shutouts, 10 to Auburn. And now here they are. One touchdown is all Kentucky's been able to muster. And only 168 total yards. I don't think their rankings are going down today. Absolutely not. Maybe more impressive. Because Kentucky has a good, well-balanced football team yeah. and offense this year. They've shut it down. One drive, basically. Ten minutes to play. Levis needs this third down. And he got it to Robinson. Boy, that was a really nice pass. I thought Wondell Robinson was going to grab that and just keep running. He kind of, the ball was in the hole, and I thought it was good enough that he might just take it and scoot because nobody's behind him here. Perfect throw, and he kind of slides and yep. makes the catch. See, that was one where you just, oh, keep going with that ball. He had to secure it, I get it. But that's one in tapes on Monday. He's going to go, I, I, I could have just gone with that one. Got it out to the 41. Will Levis has said, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. He said, get the play into me. Because late substitution that time by Kentucky. Not only that, they coupled it with a motion call, and Kentucky was going to take a timeout. They decided not to. I think they got it was delayed. False start. Oh, false. Offense. Offense number 68. Five yard penalty. Remains first down. Now this Thursday, you can see why critics have called the new season of Young Sheldon fantastic. Gather the family together for a new episode of TV's number one comedy, Young Sheldon, Thursday at 8, 7 Central here on CBS. Big change for this Georgia defense this year when you talk to Dan Lanning and Kirby is we put our players for the hurry up in a spot where they know what they're doing. We play more zone. We don't have, if they shift and move, we're more comfortable this year than we were a year ago. There's those two guys Gary's talking about, head coach and the defensive coordinator. And then there's that group that has helped the cause all day long, making for a headache for Will Levis and the Kentucky offense. It just went up another octave or two. Maybe two or three yards for McLean. But it's going to go under nine minutes here before the next snap. Liam Cohen called him as fast as he can, but guys out on the field aren't moving that quickly. Go with that little sugar huddle that's close to the line of scrimmage. Up to it now, but they've wasted a lot of clock. 
Robinson will come in motion. Levis looks to him, completes it, and he lost yardage. That's just how things are going today. A little point here with Keeley Ringo, okay? Looks like he missed the tackle, but he did it exactly right. He knows where his help is to the inside. Watch him come to the outside of the receiver because he knows in the zone he's got guys inside. Go outside leg, force it back inside to your other defenders. You knew that Greeny was behind him. So between the two of them, no damage done by number one. There's Dan Lanning calling the play on third down and 14. Levis loads, throws short on a crossing route, complete to Epps. He's short of the first down. Pretty much got to go for it, don't you? I guess so. They're about four yards short, uh, short of the first down, but they're down under seven and a half minutes. It's like everybody's taking a big deep breath. And you're going to hear the noise coming here in a second. This might be the last time Kentucky even touches it if they don't pick up this fourth down. Levis going to try to run for it, and he's got it. Clay Walker will bring him down, but he picked up the first down, needed five, got about eight. And he barely beat the clock just to get that snap. He was clapping his hands frantically. I thought they might have had two men in motion. Did they get set for a full second? Kavasi smoke moves, tight end. See, two men were in motion on that play. That could have been called. Yep. You can't have a shift in motion at the same time. And he got it into Georgia territory without a penalty called at the 46. And six and a half to play. Cummings settles in. Levis going to go deep. Got a man out there, and it's broken up. Incomplete intended for Robinson, and Lewis Seen was back there pretty much stride for stride with him. Yeah, I thought Lewis Seen was looking for the ball, and Robinson ran right into him on the play. They're both tracking the football here. Seen is, and Robinson runs right into him. I think Lewis was tracking it better than Robinson was. Yeah, that was a good no call. Stops the clock for a moment at 6.13. Second and 10. Quick throw to the outside, complete. And nice push by Bates. he get what he can. He got about eight. Third down and short coming up. Kendrick was right there, but Bates with some weight on him carried the tackler two yards shy of the first. Again, valuable seconds ticking off. They're going to be tight just getting the play off. Quick throw, Robinson with the catch, and the first down. Jackson will run him out of bounds. But he picked up the first down to move the chains. Keep the ball in front of you if you're Georgia. Kentucky can't do much more than take what's there. You know, you force it down field against the zone, you're just going to get it with these athletes picked off. you got to take what's there. And Georgia right now said, okay, you know, I mean, you're moving it, but you ain't going to beat us. Like Gary said, Waddell Robinson's got nine catches, but not for much yardage at all. Nothing big. No game breaker. At the 34 at the five-minute mark. Levis, look out behind you. Down he goes. I think it was Keeley Ringo, the corner blitz that time, coming around the tight end. Anytime you have a short field to the sideline, when you're on that near hash, 
you have to be careful. They had a guy on him, Briggs was on him, but he ran right through it, but it really didn't matter much because Quay Walker was going to get him if Keeley didn't. A loss of nine, another sack for Georgia. Georgia came in having 18 different players having at least a piece of a sack. Yeah, right. I mean, that's unbelievable. Yeah. And they didn't like, even know that, did yeah, they? Yeah, like, they Ringo, <laughs> like Ringo showed you, they come from all different spots. Here's a run right up the middle by McLean. And McLean got back near the original line of scrimmage. But now we're going to be under four minutes to play. Well, Georgia's for real. We know that. And I'll tell you, Stetson Bennett's coming on. And uh, he played good enough to play championship football here today. Started out with one bad throw, but yep. he finished spectacularly. But this defense, if they don't get injuries, it's going to be a handful for anybody. You see it out here. You know, I'll tell you, Georgia's for real. But Kentucky is a good football team. Yep. No doubt. That's going to was that 12 men in the huddle? Umpires checking with the referee. Let's see what they come up with. I got it. There is no foul on the play. Second charge time of the half. Kentucky. So they took a timeout to avoid a penalty. But 3.36 to play. On CBS. I know how you got that promo out there taking on one of the best offense. LSU's offense today wasn't bad. I guess so. Harvest Moon over Athens or October Moon, whatever. And a 30 to 7 lead for Georgia and Kentucky's down a one timeout. And they've got a third down and long coming up, but it's two down territory without a doubt. So they've got a couple of plays here to pick up the next first down. Levis throws. Nice throw to Robinson. He's short. No, well, maybe not. They might give it to him. Thought he was going to be short by a couple feet. Yeah, matched up against Keely Ringo. Done a good job all day today. Tough matchup. One on one. Perfect throw. He comes down and then he kind of bounces forward. And it's first down at the 24. This is the deepest Kentucky has been in Georgia territory since they got the field goal block. Yes, and, and the play before when Nicobe Dean ran through three blockers yeah. to save a touchdown. I know that might be the defensive play of the game. This is a 14th play of this drive, though, and it's taken them a long time. And there's only three minutes left. Swing pass out to Robinson again. Okay. And again, the Georgia defense and scene comes up to make the hit. And, and again, Ringo does it the way you're supposed to do it. When you're playing good zone defense, you know people are coming behind you. You take away that outside shoulder and let all the pursuit come inside. Force them inside. And you get seen making the tackle. And just inside the 26, second down and 11. Blitz coming off the edge. Levis throws wide side. Got it. Complete. What a catch. I tell you, Will Levis is showing he's got a full package. He's got a repertoire. I'll tell you. Marcus Harris, maybe they're saying it's incomplete now. I thought he caught it. Yeah, they called it incomplete. I think the ball came out no, before he got to the ground. Yep. Yeah. Well, they started this drive. There was 11 and a half minutes on the clock, Gary. And I, I mean, you know, I know they've got some kind of hurry up in their system here, but yeah, this is I, taking too I, long. I, I, you know, Ness, if it was 10 points, 14 points, I might be saying something. But right here, I just think Mark Stoop is going, Stoops is going, let's just have a successful drive. I mean, we're not, he's not stalling, but I don't think he feels he can win the football game. Yeah. Good point. Third down and six. I throw down 11. Beg your pardon. Throw is complete, and it's going to be close to a first down to Cummings again. Yeah, I, I think right now Mark Stoops is saying uh, this is going to help us 
the rest of the season. Going against this defense, pass blocking these guys, gaining confidence that we can move the ball. Uh, that's what I think right now Mark Stoops is thinking about. Now Kobe Dean really got a piece of the shoulder of Cummings there, and he's the player that's down for Kentucky. Well, Georgia getting it done both offensively and defensively. Brock Bowers, the sensational freshman tight end, five catches, 102 yards, and two touchdowns today, including that one where he turned around just in time to see the ball coming. And then uh, defense, Georgia has done it all year long. Guys like Jalen Carter, Jordan Davis, everybody on that front wall for Georgia getting into the act today. And that's why we have what we have right now is the number one team in the country taking care of business against number 11. Now, you, uh, for Georgia's defense, you could pretty much close your eyes and on your chart board just put your finger down and you'd have a good player. <laughs> Again, Isaiah Cummings is a guy that's down. This is at the end of the reception, and Nicobe Dean, 17, comes in. And a perfect hit on yep. the shoulder, arm, upper arm. Perfect strike that time. Didn't go head hunting at all. Wrapped up, put his arm on him. And now he's being helped off. That'll be the end of his day. Sophomore out of Louisville. One fifty nine remaining in the fourth down coming up Wednesday on CBS CSI the global phenomenon has begun a new chapter in the city where it all began new science new mysteries and a new threat to the next generation of crime scene investigators new series CSI Vegas Wednesday at 10 9 central on CBS up to the line quickly on fourth down at a yard Let's see if Levis does it himself he will for the quarterback keeper and the sneak will sneak in just over the first down marker. So both these teams have a bye next week. Of course, Georgia will be facing Kentucky. Georgia will be facing Florida next. We'll be doing that game. And Jacksonville. Yep, and then Kentucky's got at Mississippi State. So these, looking forward, you know, I mean, Georgia knows where they're marching, where they want to go. Kentucky right. trying to finish off a successful season. 18th play of the drive coming up. First down at the 14. Levis fires it out in the flat to McLean. McLean trying to make Jordan Whoa, miss, and man. that is not a miss. Lewis Seen did not miss. Wow, but closing speed on some of these guys. Lewis Seen, when that ball was thrown, was in the middle of the end zone, and he made the tackle on the 10. Coming from the left. <laughs> Lewis says, I've seen this before. <laughs> what a hit. Under a minute, second down and eight. Georgia now, the defense, just trying to keep Kentucky out of the end zone here late in the game. And they do to that point, but it's at the one-yard line to McLean. Of course, McLean's coming off the suspension. This is his first action. And right down there, hurry up. Levis leaps, almost lost the ball. Didn't get there. And now 30 seconds. Georgia actually has the ball at the end of the play, but that's Greeny. And on the previous play, we'll look back to make sure that McLean didn't get in the end zone. He did not. And then it's Levis. On the ground, I don't know this time by McLean either. I think Mark Stoops will take a timeout here. He might not have time. I think he will. With three seconds left. Kirby Smart says get back out there. Lane wrapped up for no gain. Davis and Walthour and company, they got one play left. I know this play means a lot to some people. It's not so much to others. It's not meaningless. What's with the time put black on the clock, seven seconds, you could throw a quick pass and get two plays if you want. 22nd play of the drive. 
The short toss to Robinson, and he got in. Touchdown, Kentucky. The Georgia defense was out there inciting the crowd, and they wanted to keep them out of the end zone, but they just couldn't on the 22nd play that took 11 and a half minutes. Hit behind the two tight ends and just dive across. Wendell Robinson backs in just barely. And touchdown, Kentucky. What was that, 22-play drive? Yeah. <laughs> 22 no, plays. 11 and a half minutes. <laughs> took the whole quarter almost, but they got there. Extra point by Ruffalo. Is blocked. N'Kobe Dean flags down. There's a Georgia player on the field. N'Kobe Dean comes out of the pile. Georgia's players got to be careful. If they get an unsportsmanlike penalty, they could be out the first half against Florida. Somebody was on the sideline there and walked on the field with their helmet off because they thought the game was over. At least that's what I saw in real action. This is the second block kick of the day for Georgia. And it's those big guys on the inside. Carter and company again. Yep. Jalen Carter. And then a Kobe Dean catches it on a hop. Off the ricochet from Dan Jackson's hands, actually. And there's the player out there that shouldn't have been. Yes, it was Devontae Wyatt, no doubt about that. But I thought I saw what well, might have been 17 to Kobe Dean take a swing. Might have been, I can't swear to that, but I thought I saw two players jostling and one of them take a swing. And Kirby Smart over there with Jalen Carter who just blocked the extra point. That was a one yard touchdown pass. There were two fouls on the play, both by the defense. During the return, personal foul, illegal blindside block. Number well, they're still trying to straighten it all out here. Don't know who it was. It really it didn't. Just so many people kind of yelling at each other. Now what's the fouls on the defense? Personal foul, illegal blindside block, number 88. That penalty is declined by rule. Sideline interference against the defense. The players coming onto the field. That's a live ball, treated as a dead ball. That ball, that play will be enforced 15 yards from the kickoff. So both. Well, that's good news for, for Georgia. Nobody, nothing that is going to get them to miss out. But I, I thought I saw somebody throw. Was it Carter? And that's why, that's exactly why Kirby went up and talked to Carter and said, you can't do that. We need you. That could have costed him yep. a half against, against Jackson, uh, in against Jacksonville Florida. against Florida. That's why I went to him and said, you can't make that mistake. And that's after he had blocked yeah. the extra point, too. So he made a good play and then a bad play lucky all in got, one play. Lucky he got away with that. Yep. So Georgia gives up two touchdowns today, but it took all the way to the final four seconds for the second one. And this will have no effect on their number one ranking. You can see him. He's talking to him like we can't throw punches. That can cost you a half in the next game. Can't do it. So the good hands team is up there. Chance poor will kick off for Kentucky. And a one hopper. And that will do it for Kiaris Jackson as the game comes to an end. Georgia is still perfect. 7 0 and 5 0 in the conference. And Kentucky suffers its first loss of the year. 30 to 13 the final. So Georgia's got a week off and then we'll meet them down in Jacksonville against the Florida Gators.
One of the stars of the show today, Brock Bowers. Two touchdown catches coming up after our game. Adam, BJ, and Houston with the day's best highlights on the college football postgame show presented by Rocket Mortgage. Now it's time for our play the game presented by Jersey Mike Subs. I kidded around that I told somebody today that Brock Bowers would catch seven passes. This was one of the five, and it was the second touchdown for him on the day. And Scott Howard called it like this for Georgia. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Play fake. Bennett will throw a little fade route to Bowers. Oh, he caught it! He caught it at the seven. He just stuck his hands up and caught it, and he got into the end zone. Touchdown! Touchdown! How did he catch it? He just turned his head around, and the ball was right in his hands. One of three touchdowns by Stetson Bennett today. Winning coaches with Jamie. Coach, that your, that's your fifth SEC game holding opponents of 13 points or less. <laughs> is this defense, as much as they're skilled, what about their pride in not letting teams score? A lot of pride. Nobody in our end zone. They got in there, and they got in there twice, but uh, we blocked an extra point. So that was good. We blocked the field goal. You were a little frustrated here at the end of the game. You, you preach discipline on this yeah. team, and that's what it needs to win a championship? Absolutely. You play in big games all the time in this league, so you can't react like you've never seen it before. We got a guy run on the field when we block a field goal. It's not real smart. But I am proud of the way the guys play. That's a really good football team. That's a physical football team. And I, I appreciate the way they play. But our guys play really hard, too, and I'm proud of them. Talk about physicality. Setson got a little banged up in the first half. But what about the way he finished this game and really took over this offense? Did a great job. I thought Monkin called the game aggressively, allowed uh, Stetson to make some plays. They were loading the box on us. Take what they give you. Thanks, Coach. Thank you, guys. Go dogs. Now the dogs are still going. 7-0. And 5-0, and oh, as you look at the standings in the East, they take the top spot, and Kentucky falls a game behind with the setback today. 30-13, to 13, the final from Athens. Will this be the year of the dog? They're well on their way, and now maybe well on their way to the East title and a trip to Atlanta. That's going to wrap it up for us. For Gary Danielson and Jamie Erdahl, Gene Steratore, and our entire CBS crew, Brad Nessler saying so long from Sanford Stadium. Final score, dogs over the Cats, 30-13. to 13. We'll get you back to Adam Zucker and company for the college football postgame show presented by Rocket Mortgage right after these messages. So long from Athens.